Many of us, especially those suffering from the illness of addiction, are going to come across moments in our life where we'll need somebody else to make that decision to increase our chances for success, where we'll need somebody else to reach out their hand and say, get in. Fortunately for me, after I left Daytop, I came across another one of those moments. It was 11 years ago. Now, having gone through Daytop and graduated from college, I was a first-year law student. Father Joe had asked me to come to the facility at Daytop to share my story with the family there. I went there with the hope that somehow I could touch somebody's life with my story. Instead, it was somebody else who touched mine. See, Father Joe had invited a special guest there that night. At the time, that special guest was the United States Attorney in New Jersey, Governor Christie. After I spoke, Father Joe introduced me to the governor. And after thanking me for sharing my story, he reached out his hand and gave me the opportunity of a lifetime to come work in his office that summer in a highly competitive, coveted internship program for first-year law students. Prior to that moment, I had no idea his connection to Daytop, that he was a former board member or was supporting substance abuse treatment and rehabilitation. But when he reached out his hand in that moment, he told me all of that. And what the governor did for me that day has had an impact on my career and my life that keeps going on today. It was that internship that led to my first job at a law school where I was a prosecutor in Brooklyn in family court dealing with juvenile delinquents where I had an opportunity to show my own compassion and show that we help kids struggling not by punishing them but by rehabilitating them. And my story is just one example, just one illustration of the governor's commitment to Daytop's philosophy that treatment works, recovery happens, and every kid deserves a chance. Eighteen years ago, I couldn't have imagined I'd be standing here today when I was strung out on crack, standing in the middle of a street. And then again, eleven years ago, I couldn't imagine standing here today. But the governor reached out his hand, and he said, come with me. If each one of you here tonight found a way to reach out your hand to support someone struggling with the illness of addiction, you never know what kind of impact that little gesture might have on their life. And you never know when they might show up to say thank you. I can't tell you how many times um, over the course of my time as U.S. Attorney, uh, my time running for governor, and now in the last three and a half years that I've been governor, uh, that I've, I've spoken about Greg. And um, I know some members of the media here tonight who have heard me talk about this so many times, and, and I'm sure because it's part of their job, in the back of their mind they're wondering, does this guy really exist? <laughs> Or is, is Christy just making this guy up <laughs> to try to make a point about substance abuse? Well, I see Jenna and Melissa back there, and I don't know who else from the media is here, but there he is. Um, he exists, um, and thank God he does. Um, first of all, thank God he does for his family. The first thing I think about when I think about this issue is the pain that it causes the families who really just want their son back, who want their brother or sister back, who just want their husband or wife back. I can't tell you in the years I've been associated with Daytop how many families I've spoken to and heard them say those exact words. I just want my son back. I just want my brother back. Because what they're saying is that the person, that that person has become because of their substance abuse is no longer recognizable to them. It's not the person they grew up with. It's not the person they raised. You need to understand how profoundly substance abuse changes a person's conduct. 
it profoundly changes it. And so I'm glad he's here for his family. I'm glad he's here for our society. He briefed over his history pretty quickly there. But he is extraordinarily inspirational. More inspirational than I could ever hope to be. Because he's confronted a challenge in his life that defeats so many people. Some because they don't try, but many because they try and just can't do it. But he was 16 years old. Father Joe before asked you to picture someone in your mind who's struggling with substance abuse during the invocation. What I'd like you to do right now is picture a normal, healthy 16-year-old boy in your mind. And how tough it is to be a 16-year-old boy to begin with, let alone be a 16-year-old boy alone on a street strung out on crack cocaine, not knowing how you're going to get home. If Greg told you a story tonight about being a 16-year-old boy who was stricken with cancer, each and every one of you would say, what can we do to make him better? What can we do to help save his life? Without judgment, without question, without assignment of blame. That's where we need to get to in this society regarding substance abuse. The fact is, each and every one of us have made bad decisions in our lives. And we're fortunate, most of the time, that those bad decisions don't lead to an avalanche of sorrow. Most of those bad decisions are just something that we wake up the next morning and say, okay, not doing that again. Not doing that again. He may have felt that the first morning after he woke up from using drugs, but because he is who he is, because God made him the way he is, he couldn't stop. Yet, there will be some who make judgments about the folks who wind up in Greg's circumstance and allow those judgments to lead them to feel justified in not supporting the need for treatment for these folks. Because you know what happens, they commit crimes. They get people pregnant. They do bad things. And we think to ourselves, well, for some, they get what they deserve. Not the people in this room. Because your being here and supporting this cause tells me that that's not what you believe. And so this 16-year-old child, stricken by this disease, is not disposable. His life is no less precious than the lives of my four children or any of your children. And it is salvageable. And if you doubt that for a minute, look at him. He went over really quickly, didn't he? He went from 16-year-old crack addict to I'm working in the U.S. Attorney's office. <laughs> Like that. Didn't happen like that. He worked every day to hold in his heart and his mind the lessons he learned at Daytop. And then he worked to get his high school degree. And then he worked to get his college degree. And then he got admitted to law school. Great feats for a 16-year-old boy, the 16-year-old boy you have in your head. 
the normal, happy, healthy 16-year-old boy. If that normal, healthy, happy 16-year-old boy you all have in your head right now graduated from high school, graduated from college, and was admitted to law school, for just those accomplishments, we would hold that young man on our shoulders. He did it, while at the same time battling a disease and addiction that has defeated and killed hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people in this country. So he glossed over that part real quick. That's part of who he is. But we shouldn't gloss over it. And I didn't. I'm no saint, not by a long shot. But when I sat there in 1995, or 2000, and, not 1995, in 2002, and I heard his story that day, there was no question in my mind that I wasn't doing him a favor. He was doing me one. Because the young men and women he was going to interact with at the U.S. Attorney's Office in the main were young men and women of privilege who had gone to the best schools and had a relatively easy path to their moment in that prestigious internship. And I said to myself, this young man will show all the others what overcoming challenge is all about. There's lots of great things you get to do as governor. Mary Pat named some of them in her remarks. You now you get to eat donuts on David Letterman. You, um, <laughs> You get to sing Thunder Road with Jimmy Fallon. You get to wear that damn fleece on Saturday Night Live. You get to meet with the Prime Minister of Israel. You get to go swimming with the King of Jordan. You get to sing Hotel California with Bono. Yeah, it's a long story, I'm not telling you. <laughs> but I can tell you for sure, for me, there is nothing better I've gotten to do as governor of New Jersey in the last three and a half years than to come up on this stage, hug Greg, and whisper in his ear, I'm proud of you.